Hey folks, welcome to another Hero Press Tip of the Week. This week we're going to talk about Curl, which is a command line tool and library for transferring data with URLs. I'm going to show you some command line tricks you can do with it, and we're going to base some future tips on this. So you might come back to this later, but that's why we're doing it now. But I wanted to show you some information about it first. This is the website for it, uh, curl.se. And I don't particularly like this site. I brought it up because it's, it's the main site, and you should know it's there. But the Wikipedia page is, in my opinion, much better. You can see that there's an alternate uh, spelling here. And you can see it was released in 96, had a couple of names, and it can do a lot of stuff. And it works on a surprisingly high number of platforms, uh, including FreeBSD, IRIX, uh, OpenBSD, OS2 Warp, DOS, etc. So it, it gets around. Um, most Importantly for you is that it's pretty much present on any Unix platform. So if you log into your server, curl is probably there. If you're running a Mac, curl is there. If you're running Linux, curl is there. Uh, so it's always available and can be very useful. Uh, I want to show you some stuff that we're not going to get into too much in this video, but you should be aware. PHP can do curl, and these are all the curl functions. And if you were to try and use them, it would look something like this. So you would assign a variable to curl in it. You would set some options here. So this is the website that we're gonna download with curl. Uh, then you would run curl exec, and it would download it and put it into dollar ch and then you close the connection so this right here is a browser session curl is just a web browser it just gets one page at a time and none of the additional stuff like it doesn't get any of the linkedin css or javascript or images or anything it's just the html now if you want to do all this stuff in wordpress it's even more amazing wordpress has something called the http api so um, we're going to go down here to their code example. And you could use one function called WP Remote Get and put it in a URL. And oh, look, it goes to get Ben Lobo. And it puts it in their dollar response. That's it. So this code is all wrapped up in this one one liner. And it gets back the array headers, the body, the response, and then the actual contents. Um, so doing it in WordPress is a lot easier than doing it just in PHP. Now, all that said, what I'm here to show you today is some command line magic. So I'm going to come right over here to my command line and we're going to do curl and put in an address. We'll do example.com. And it just downloaded it. And that's it. It's just, it spits it right out to the screen. So it doesn't save it or anything. It's just there. Now you can use a flag called dash O for output and give it a file name. Or you can do it the Unix way and put in a little walker here and give it a, a name. So we'll we'll call this example.com.html. And there we are. Uh, it has a little progress meter. If you're downloading something big enough, that actually updates by the second. Um, if you're just downloading something small like this, you don't really get to take advantage of that. But if we do an ls, there's example. If we edit it. You can see that it's just a web page. Now, this one's quite small. Let's do Hero Press. There we go. And again, it just dumped it to the screen. 
So again, let's use the Waka and put it in HeroPress.com.html. And here we have all the HTML for HeroPress. So this can be useful if you want to save the code of a page. Um, curl does not run JavaScript. So if you have a page that's being built by JavaScript, but you want to get what the raw code is before JavaScript gets to meddle with it in your browser, then this is the perfect way because this pulls in that code before JavaScript has a chance to meddle with it. So you can see what it might be doing ahead of time. Um, let's skip a bunch here. Yeah, see, there's a whole bunch of JavaScript going on on the top there. Uh, this is uh, built with Cadence and the Gutenberg editor. So there's a bunch of Gutenberg stuff in there. But anyway, that's a page. Now, I more often use curl to look at headers. And headers are the, the meta information about a page. And browsers look at them. Uh, servers look at them. Browsers send them to the server. Servers send them back to the browser. But just information about uh, the transaction. So if we do curl-i on example.com, we get this block of, of headers. So at the top, we can see that it's using HTTP2. Uh, 200 is the response code. So you may be more familiar with 404, not found. 200 is totally successful. Content encoding is gzip. We'll look at that in another video. Accept range is bytes. Uh, the page is this many seconds old. And the cache control the max age it can get to is this many seconds. So uh, as an academic exercise, let's figure out how much time that is. We'll pull up my basic calculator here, and we'll do 604,800 divided by 60. So now we have minutes. Let's do it again. We'll do it by hours. Let's do it again, but... We'll divide by 24 to get days, and it's seven. So the max age is a week on the, for the cache on this. Um, so let's try its current age. Divided by 60, divided by 60. So it's 90 hours old. Now, this doesn't do fractions very well, so it's some somewhat over three days old. So now we, hold, we know how long this page has been sitting here cached. Content type is HTML. Um, there's the date. Uh, E-tag, uh, this tells when the cache expires, when it was last modified, what web server this is. I'm not familiar with ECS, so now I'm curious. It tells us that it hit the cache, and it tells us how big the file is, 648 bytes. Now, we're going to rerun that, and then I'm going to do HeroPress.com and compare them. Now, we get a lot less information back because the web server just doesn't send as much. Again, HTTP2, again, 200. This time our server is, is Nginx, which is very common, and I'm familiar with it. There's the date, the content type, uh, very, except encoding. I'm not sure what very is. The xcache handler is called cache enabler engine. And what happened when it tried to hit the cache is a bypass. So it didn't hit the cache. It actually got the, the actual page. And uh, another pro tip here. I happen to know that NX Excel is the name of the caching engine at Nexus. And so just from this, I can know that the site is running on Nexus. I already knew, but if I didn't, that's what would tell me. So I've shown you two tricks here with curl. One is how to actually download a page. 
And one is how to look at the headers. There are thousands of things you can do with curl, and we're not going to go over them. Um, I'm going to use some extra curl options in future tips. So uh, don't forget this stuff or come back and watch it again if you need to. But I recommend reading up on curl and finding out what all it can do. Just going through the uh, PHP options is extremely helpful. It explains it a lot better than trying to read uh, the documentation, which I should point out on every machine is under man curl, man for manual. And uh, it gives a, a nice list of things you can do, all the protocols it handles, progress meter, all the flags, all that stuff. So you can always find docs under the man file. I hope you find this useful.